Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this coffee break. My name is Michael Manek, technical product expert at Edify. And today, for this coffee break, we'll look into the Elbow Flex, a corrosion inspection solution for carbon steel pipes and elbows. Uh, so when we when we get to inspecting pipes and elbows, uh, there's a few pain points inspection challenge. Uh, we need to make that sure that the corrosion inspection of small diameter elbows uh, it's challenging because of there's important surface shape changes between the intradose and the extradose. Uh, most probes won't be able to do this this change. Uh, multiple pipe diameters need to be covered. You also usually. Preferably, you want to use the same probe for all the configuration though, so you don't have to go back to your truck uh, between different pipes. And you also want to have a eye detection probability and 100% coverage of your area. Uh, there's always the option to go towards fully automated scanners, but they're often too laborious to deploy in the field. Uh, they will require you to bring a lot of material with you, and they are usually pretty expensive as well. Uh, so to bypass all these pain points, ZTech came up uh, with a scanner that is now in the Edify lineup, and the scanner is the ElbowFlex scanner. And what it, it is, it, it replaces the traditional grid type examination for uh, manual scanning, for example, with a single probe or uh, the encoded manual scanning sequences, uh, and it generates a high resolution C-scan image. By using the Elbow Flex Scanner, the flexible high resolution phased array probe made by sensor networks, and either a Topaz, a Gecko, or a Mantis, uh, any of those PAUT units will work. And the onboard software is used for efficient setup, data recording, and uh, data analysis. So the Elbow Flex Scanner itself is the main piece uh, we're going to be looking at today. And uh, here's what it looks like. It's used for the inspection of carbon steel pipes and elbows. There's four magnetic wheels on the scanner. It carries the flexible array phased array UT probe uh, fixed by an aqualink wedge. So it's a flexible wedge as well. And there's a single button to manage that acquisition, start, pause, index line, and reset. And there's an additional button as well to control the cotton pump. Uh, what does it look like when I want to use it? Uh, well, the top button here will control the pump and let the water flow uh, if you're using one of our uh, associated pumps. And then the bottom button will allow you to pause the scan, uh, which will keep the encoders running, but will uh, hit the, the pause button on the recording. And then once you hit the pause button again, it unpauses, indexes over, and starts your scan again. So with that, you can do your full scan uh, using only the scanner. You don't need to go back to the machine in between your scan lines. Uh, the Elbow Flex has also the adjustable angle of the magnetic wheel. So there's a, a knurl on the front. And as you roll that knurl, it will adapt the diameter of the scanner from 4-inch NPS to a flat surface. So it will also work on flat surfaces, no problem. Uh, the scanner also works on el uh, elbows, intradose. And, uh, extra dose and the cheeks with the same uh, bend in the scanner. So you don't have to readjust it in between the same bend. Uh, you put one position for one pipe and you can do the full turn of uh, intra dose, extra dose and uh, cheeks of a elbow. And it's very lightweight, 1.3 pounds or 0.6 kilograms. So it's uh, very adaptable to the field. You can transport it. You can use it uh, overhead, no problem. That scanner is used with a, a flexible phased array UT probe. Uh, it's a flexible 1D linear array, 7 megahertz, 64 element, 1 millimeter pitch. It's available with both the Z-Pack connector or the IPEX connector, depending on the instrument you want to use it on. Uh, we usually couple it with an Aqualink wedge. So instead of having a bubbler with a column of water, uh, now we only require a thin film of water with a, a water or a water-based gel. So with the Aqualink wedge, we need a lot less coupling uh, to, to get adequate signals. Uh, it also operates in pulse echo mode. So the UT performances of that probe are actually uh, comparable to a solid UTPA probe, uh, 64 element similar uh, size in, on the Rex light wedge. 
and uh, it's it's a pretty big probe it covers up to 50 millimeter or two inches of circumference in a single line of scan uh, on top of that we're going to use that with either capture or ultra vision depending on the unit you're, you're using it on uh, the onboard software is used for efficient setup recording data analysis there's integrated control of the scanning sequence with the elbow flex so you can control the full scanning uh, directly on board the uh, scanner and the software will understand what you're trying to do. Uh, there's onboard corrosion data analysis tools, uh, uh, options to export your C scans, uh, allow transferring the inspection data, for example, to a, a different software or to Excel to do some advanced analysis. And uh, there's a software synchro tool in post-processing if you want to compensate for thickness variations of the actual language and, and just reprocess everything so it looks clean and nice and uh, if you wanted to you could also purchase our uh, dedicated couple pump this this pump has been made especially for the elbow flex and is uh, controllable for the button directly on the scanners so it's a compact peristaltic pump it comes in a pelican casing and it is battery operated up to 20 hours of continuous operation uh, it's controlled by the Alpha Bow Flex buttons directly on the scanner and it handles water based gel as well as water only, depending on what you want to do. And since it has a, a very fine uh, water uh, control, you can uh, reduce the amount of coupling that is going to be spilled on site. Now we're going to look at a, a case study we can do uh, using the uh, Elbow Flex. So what we're going to look at is a small uh, four inch NPS elbow uh, with a wall thickness of nine millimeters. And in it, there's two sides. There's a machined step with multiple depths. And on the other side, there's simulated ID corrosion and pitting, both flat bottom holes and spherical bottom holes. Uh, and here is what a, a scan with the scanner looks like. It's pretty simple, really. Uh, what I typically like to do is start at the middle of my elbow. I go up and down. I pause. I move to the next line at the middle of my elbow. And when I unpause, it resets my scan axis. So I, I reduce any chance of drift or something like this. And then I start, start back. I go back up, go back down. And once I'm, I'm back down, I'm going to pause again, go back to my uh, zero position, index over. So as you can see, I don't need a full grid on my pipe. All I need is a few scan lines uh, and the wheels with the magnetic wheels, with the strength of those wheels, I make sure I'm going to go in a straight line uh, because those wheels adapt properly to the diameter of my pipe. And as you can see, it creates a, a rather uh, clean image. And what I'm displaying is actually a gate two minus gate one image. So a differential gate image. So even though my interface can move up and down a little bit, the difference between the interface and the back wall, it stays uh, relatively constant throughout. So that's how I'm getting a, a good image. Now, this pipe has been welded. It's to half of a pipe that's been belt welded. And that's what we can see on that particular scan line, the, the blue area right here. Uh, that's the, the weld between those two halves of the pipe. And as you can see, it's a, it's a fairly easy scan. Uh, I'm not even on a stable elbow and I can still do that, that scan fairly easily. I could even go a little bit faster if I wanted to. Uh, in this case, that was a prototype. So I did take my time to make sure I would get a, a good scan for uh, the demo. And on the second line, I had those spherical and flat bum holes I mentioned earlier. And on this uh, last scan line, I'm gonna have that step block so you can see different thicknesses appear in different colors. And that's what I'm getting. I'm getting a very, very clear image. Now, what does the results look like when I look at, at it in, in post-processing? Well, here we have the machine steps. Uh, as you can see, I, I may, may have wobbled a little bit when I did my scan, uh, but now I'm, I'm really zoomed in. If I was zoomed out, I wouldn't see that wobble at all. Uh, on the uh, right hand side, you can see the thickness profile of the machine steps. You can see all of the steps individually. Really great. Uh, that has been uh, synchronized. So you can uh, see how, how the synchronization looks. You, you have a single nice line and uh, you have your position C scan, of course, that's going to give you a color with respect to what, on what thickness you're on. Uh, 
So the thinnest steps are close to the white or the blue and the thicker steps are close to the orange or the, or the yellow. Now, if we look on the other side, we have uh, FBHs and SBHs. Uh, so the FBH, they, they look great on the C scan. You can see, you can see they actually look round. I could do the measurements. Uh, and then you have the uh, spherical bottom hole with, which shows great on the uh, sectorial scan. Uh, if you look from the side, we see them come out great. Uh, they, they don't show as much on the amplitude on the position C scan so because the amplitude is, is lower, but that's to be expected with spherical bottom holes. They're not really great reflectors. So we, we don't expect them to come up great, but they still uh, come out and, and we could see them on an amplitude C scan, for example. How, how would I go through to do full analysis? Well, the first step I would probably do is, is set up a threshold. In this case, my, my nominal thickness is nine millimeters. So I'm going to set up a threshold at eight millimeters. And then I can, for example, go in here and try to find, okay, I've got my first SDH. If I look at the top, I've got my information field that are going to give me, for example, uh, the minimum thickness in a certain area and the uh, percentage of, of this area that's below my eight millimeter threshold. Uh, I can have that as an indication. So I just box in my flaws as I see them. The information field update as I'm moving my cursors. So that box is made by my blue and red cursor. As I can uh, show now, I could click on find minimum. It's going to place my data cursor and my A scan directly at the position of the minimum amplitude that is in that box. So I see the A scan. I can confirm, okay, that's actually the measurement I want to have. And I can go ahead and, and place those cursors and, and do multiple flaws like this as I'm filling my indication table. So as I'm doing this, I can, after a, a little while, I'm going to have all these indications that I draw. I can zoom in. In this case, I've got a, a step that have multiple heights. Uh, and it's still able to do the measurement of, okay, what's the minimum thickness? What's the area be below a threshold? Even though uh, those steps are all at different uh, thicknesses. And as I, I go along, I'm going to have to draw the whole thing. And now I'm going to get that uh, indication table here with all the fields I ask. In this case, what I ask is actually... Uh, give me the first position where I get below my uh, eight millimeter threshold along the scan axis and uh, the index axis. And then it can give me also the size of that area. So I, I can see, okay, this, this particular one is, is five millimeter in scan axis, four millimeter in, in index axis and so on. So I get that full list of all the indication I've entered. Uh, and, and I could choose the, these fields. Of course, I don't have to use these one exactly. Uh, like I'm showing here, there's multiple types of fields I could be using for, for example, thickness measurements, thickness boundaries, or I call, could also create a custom set of information fields. Uh, so I could select them, six of them ma uh, manually for the ones I want to have. And as you can see, there's uh, over uh, 200 info fields that are available uh, in the software for you to actually choose uh, what you want to be using uh, during your scan and, and uh, having your report, of course. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to use my, my custom info fields. Uh, so I have uh, what I mentioned earlier in the, the top info fields. Those could, could be different. They don't have to be the same. Then I'm going to be generating a report. Uh, I could use a custom report where I choose exactly what's going to be exported, or I could choose one of the predefined uh, uh, reports we have directly on the instrument. So with the custom and full field, you can choose, uh, okay, what, what's going to be in my report? Is it going to be a fully blown uh, uh, section or just part? Uh, and then I get my custom report. For example, in this case, I only choose a, a few fields. So I don't have it too much uh, of a long report. I have my indication where they are, what was the, the, the area. And then for each indications I added, I've got images and the info fields I added. So as you can see, I've got uh, plenty of information here uh, for me to do my analysis. And I could just give that report to the asset owner, for example, and it would have nice images with, okay, that's the area that's problematic. It's th this big and this there's this much that's below a certain threshold. And that way uh, you make sure you get everything you need. Of course, this, this report is fully customizable uh, as we go along. So, 
in in in, in brief the elbow flex uh, what are the benefits of the scanner well it's easy to use it's easy to deploy uh, there's one flexible phased array probe for the entire pipe range so with one probe you can adapt to the scan specimen of any dimensions from four inch nps to a flat uh, and it stays constrained concentric throughout the inspection because of the wheels that can bend and adapt to the correct diameter of that pipe. So you make sure you're always in a straight line. There's the C-scan imaging, so it's easy analysis. You can also make sure you've covered your full area but by just looking at your C-scan. The encoded data can be easily interpreted using either capture or ultra vision touch software directly on board either of our instruments. And the magnetic wheels on the, uh, on the scanner help to make sure that the scanner is covering a, a full line straight and it also it are strong enough to keep the scanner in place even if we're upside down for example the magnetic wheels are strong enough the scanner will be held upside down uh, without any problems and you make sure you you get full coverage it's also also a highly versatile tool with the aqualink wedge instead of the water chamber you don't need uh, as much coupling uh, with bubbler systems for example you need to let water uh, flow constantly with a, a very high flow with the aqualink wedge, that's that's not a problem. Uh, it works on both uh, water gel, uh, water water or gel for coupling. I've also seen uh, customers use grease in an area where they couldn't use water. They had a grease gun, and it went perfectly. We had very good coupling. Uh, you could do the full operation of the scanner from the onboard button, so no need to go back to the instruments between your your scan lines, for example. We also have a dedicated and battery operated pump. And finally, uh, when it's combined with any of the Topaz, Gecko, or the Mentos instrument, the data can be saved in high resolution uh, with, with very, very good image. And it's it's always fully configured for you. It comes with a setup already made by our sales engineers. Uh, so uh, everything's seamless. You can just start scanning with it as soon as you get it. Uh, that will be all for my presentation. So if any of you have questions to ask about the elbow effect scanner, I'll be happy to answer them. Victoria is asking, uh, what's the advantage of the elbow flex versus the competitors? Uh, which is a very good question. So most of our competitors on the market, uh, they're, they're using a water uh, chamber or, or bubbler system. Uh, and those are, are have water columns, which, which can be interesting, but really the, the, they use a lot of water, and if you're in a, a restricted environment, you don't want to have all that water flow all the, over the place. Uh, with the, the Aqualink, you don't need as much water to, the, to couple. And uh, the other thing is those those bubbler systems, they need different shoes for different diameters. Uh, so if you were to scan multiple pipes, you would have to go back to your truck, change your shoe, use the tools to do that and everything. Well. With our scanner, you have the wheel in front of the scanner. You just adapt to the different di diameters directly uh, from that wheel on the scanner, and uh, you're good to go. So those are the two main advantages of the elbow flex. Uh, Damien is asking, uh, what's the temperature range of operation for the scanner? Uh, so the scanner can go from 0 degrees Celsius up to uh, 45 degrees Celsius. So we're talking uh, 32 degrees Fahrenheit to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the reason why it doesn't go below zero is is because of, of freezing, of course, uh, and and then there's a, a maximum range for the the probe itself. It can go over that at 45 degrees Celsius uh, temperature. Uh, Jean Francois is asking, uh, what's the range of the elbows it will adapt to? Uh, it will go down to four inch NPS and up to 90 degree bands. So there's no problem on a four inch NPS 90 degree band and all the way to flat and, and straight pipes. So it will do really a large range of elbows, uh, no problem on this. Uh, all right, so if we don't have any more questions, uh, don't hesitate if you have more questions afterwards to send us an email or to visit uh, the Edify website. All the details on the Elbow Flex are online directly on there. <laughs>